Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from this Aragon, HRE and No Guy Hard cinematic universe. This story, ladies and gentlemen, is about a transfer war. But wait Spudgun, you might be thinking. Transfer wars don't have any casualties, isn't this going to be a boring video with no actual war? Don't worry, things will definitely go completely wrong in this transfer war. A terrible mistake that threatens to completely undo all the work that Aragon, Italy and Hungary have done, especially what we achieved in this video. You can go and watch this if you haven't, I'll do a recap of the situation now anyway. After that I'm also going to do a quick explanation of transfer wars for the people who don't exactly know what these are, which are nearly 8 billion people on this earth after all. I feel like most people watching this video will know what transfer wars are, but I've got to put the explanation in anyway. I think it's important. So if you don't need that explained, just use the navigation down there to skip directly to the action or the description, or just use this timestamp. But not before you like the video, subscribe, join the channel membership, or support me on Patreon. And don't forget to tune into my live streams. Not only do I show thrilling, fascinating Vic2 multiplayer campaigns live, I also do some variety. Anyway, this video takes place quite soon after the events of this one. As Aragon Italy, I put my army into Hungary to launch a great restoration war to bring Hungary back to its glory against the Ottoman Empire, Poland, Lithuania and Tatarstan. In the early game of my Aragon campaign, I knocked out Venice but also Spain. When the Spain player bowed out of the game after being defeated, he left behind a large AI country with lots of land of my accepted pops that I need to over time annex. This even includes includes their North African colonies of Morocco, those also have quite a lot of Spanish pops in them. Doing so requires infamy, which is a very limited resource in Victoria 2. If you go over 25, everyone gets a Cassus Belly against you, which is manageable in multiplayer, but if you go over 32.5, you get a debilitating modifier which destroys your country. So very often in these multiplayer games, to get around the infamy limitations, people share infamy. Countries who aren't using very much infamy help the countries who do need to use a lot of infamy, and this is all part of the various negotiations and deals that go on. We normally refer to this as giving infamy to someone. For example, you go into a voice channel, approach a country and say, excuse me, can you give me 11 infamy please? Which means they will justify and acquire state casus belly on the country that you want land from. Using other people's infamy like this against other players is often quite discouraged in certain multiplayer groups, but using it against the AI is always fine. When it comes time for the country who use their infamy to take that land to give it to the country that needs it, they use the negotiated transfer casus belly. This war goal, which uses zero infamy, zero war score and does not create a truce, is the only real way to transfer a land simply between two countries. Since Victoria 2 is an old game and they didn't have any mechanic for simply giving land to another country, like most modern paradox games have, I bet Victoria 3 doesn't have a way though. Now, the thing about transfer wars is, in order to do a transfer war with one of your allies, you have to break the alliance and essentially declare war on them, even though it is, of course, a fake war. This might lead to some problems or vulnerabilities, but I won't explain exactly what those are. I think you're starting to get the idea. Anyway, it's been a few years now since the war in the previous video. Poland, Lithuania and the Ottomans, highly reliable members of the enemy alliance, are being substituted in this session. The truce from the previous war is ticking away, preventing anyone who took part in it to declare war again, unless they use a truce breaking casus belly such as acquire core. But if anyone used that, all of their allies wouldn't be able to join, and all the allies of the person being decked on would be able to join through defensive calls to arms. I'm fighting the Spanish AI once again to take that land that I need, and I've called in my good friend Hungary to use some of his infamy to help me out. Uh, yeah, what do you want me to take? It's difficult because they all cost a lot. It's like playing the Reno mod. They all cost like 60 war score. Can you just take, please, uh, Alrif, uh, the colony? Do you want me to take uh, Fez? That's the highly populated one. Yes, please, Fez as well. Eating Spain is going to be like one state per war at this point. 20 to 30 years. Now, <laughs> I was going to say, oh, I'll take the capital next war, but then they'll just move the capital and I have to do that again. I have to take it last. Well, there we go. That's another fucking Spain war. Did any of you guys get machine guns? No. Or am I the first to do so? Ottoman liberation oh, of Alakia. Yeah. Oh, fuck! Oh. Oh, yeah. A transfer thing. Listen, just fight that hungry, you can win that. I should honestly be able to beat him. Look at his mil tech. Ottomans and the 
channel. Yeah, you can win that. Just uh. Are we gonna go to one speed? Oh. Armin's, I'd, I'd attack those stacks. Instead of instead of sieging, I just attack. Oh yeah. True, Let true, me true. just do this as soon as I. I'll just get this transfer done. Take, as soon take as possible. fucking mob stacks. Oh fucking base, yeah. but what the fuck? Offer me the piece quick. Offer me that piece. The transfer quick. Start sitting on his mobilization places. He got you off guard. Like, is it just pulling back? Just gonna do the. No, it's just base because he declared fucking. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? I can't help you out of this one, Jim. With all we've been through, I can't pull you out of this one. Leave something behind so that you start seizing him down. Retreat. Don't stretch. To the mountains. Not the mountains. Right, Hungry, you're going to want to fucking retreat to Tagumurish. Yeah. He's following me up in the mountains. It's annoying that this is happening because the actual Ottomans player never would have done this. It's okay, I'm actually not, I'm not doing too badly. Can you go, go to the mountains? Oh, yep. those guys, that should have been instant. Uh, you, you're gonna get there. He stopped his units, you're gonna get there. Yeah, you're alright. You're alright. You're making it. Your army's gonna be fine. You're gonna win that mountain battle. You can cycle into Moldavia there. Cycle your completely depleted shits in three days. Before he encircles you. Get that uh, reinforcement tick. Cycle too late. They're gonna get there on the 2nd of January. When can you join? You can join in a year and a half, so... Okay, yeah, I can hold out for a year and a half. You can. Well, is it that quick? Well, listen, I'll try. I'm moving troops, and I'll join when I can if the war's still going. He has a very good opportunity to beat the shit out of No, no, don't put him in. Wait for the end of the month. No, no, it takes another day for them to tick. Oh, now you're gonna be good. Guys in Budapest and guys in the mountains to the north. You should be able to retreat to Nagsbayan and then you have more troops waiting there to. Yeah, you'll be fine. This is some weird ass war of attrition. Also, you have 30k men in Budapest. If you can take those mountains, you can encircle his army. That's why those mountain ones will be able to reinforce, so that's nice. You got your 30k that just arrived back from Spain? Yep. He was so sneaky. At least I'm gonna lose GP after this, which is nice. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stack wipe him. By the way, I suggest taking Montenegro if you have the infamy for it. It has some creation pops. The PLC is also going to be on the same truce. So I'll garrison that boy. Right. Oh, that's nice. If he joins when I join. Won that battle. Oh, Holy uh, shit. You might stack wipe a lot of his army. I think they are just going to drag this war out until the truces are up. You know, no one's going to win a decisive... Start funding your military, Spud Gun. Why? Uh, we're not joining for another year. 
Oh, okay. I was thinking about doing a 1v1 with the Ottomans anyway. Use your navy to fucking give it more exhaustion. I, I have transports, that's all I have. And he has six ships. I didn't think he'd have the balls to do it. Honestly, that's a, it was a good move. Yeah, the kind of move he stole from me. That's why I hate it so much. <laughs> They know they have no way of winning over when it escalates, unless they have someone else joining. I think the DM will join on our side if the HRE does. Well, probably. But I don't think the HRE won't join. They might be willing to accept a limited piece at this point. Uh, well, I can only really take one state anyway, so... Yeah. I suggest Montenegro. It has some creation pops. Not a lot, but it's something you gain. It also has iron, too. Oh, yep. Yeah, here it is. Oh no, he's retreating. Yeah. I thought he was attacking me. I was about to get ready. Uh, oh, I suggest keeping some units nearby so he doesn't just send two stacks and wipes them. I have leagues of mil tech above him. Slovakian nationalists. Oh, yeah. I'm getting attacked. Oh shit, you're under attack. Reinforce it. Reinf reinforce it. follow up or no do not he will destroy you i don't know it looks easy but it's not <sighs> why do they want a fucking rerun of the last war do they think they'll fucking win it this time they thought they would annihilate me that was their thought process well they haven't so why why would they bother escalating because they're subs they just want a good war and then they're gonna piss off when their nation dies they're not getting a white piece that that's for damn sure damn sure anyway can i get money from anyone i have eight million thanks all of it? Wow, that's really generous. I need steamer shipyards, but I can't build them. Hey, I'm building it. I'm offering. I'm offering. Oh, hello, what's the piece? Here it comes. Big piece, that's my offer. No. One state. One state? Which state? Montenegro. North. Either Mar Montenegro or Northern Serbia, one of those two. You pick. I'm fine with piecing out for Montenegro. Fair. That's fine. All right. I've got this right. raging mobilization, I need to do something with it. Uh, demobilize it. I'll wait for the war to finish. I'm gonna demobilize when PLC demobilizes. This was PLC their last team. chance to like... Yeah, they did. They both did. They said they'll peace out for Montenegro. Yo, hungry. Yeah? You want to trade uh, the, the one Austrian province for Slovenia? I'll negotiate a transfer. Yeah, go for it. You can justify it. Holy shit, what the fuck? Why, do, why does Muscovy get so many moves? I'm gonna need your help with the stuff. Oh, okay. What a great W for Hungary. Can everyone give him a round of applause, please? He managed to pull off a great victory in the wake of my mistake of leaving him unguarded. The Ottomans went for this risky move, but Hungary pulled through mainly due to his vastly superior military tech, including machine guns. So how much of a realistic chance of winning this did the Ottomans have? Well, in order to compensate for their lack of mil tech, their low soldier pops meaning they don't have that big an army, and them still recovering from the previous war where they had a significant portion of their army destroyed, they had to pull off a really good manoeuvre and encircle and 
destroy the bulk of Hungary's standing army, which they didn't manage to do through a series of retreats and mountain battles and just really messy stuff that the Ottomans couldn't really win. Hungary was able to reinforce with his mobilised troops very quickly because it's all very nearby to the battles and he also brought his troops back from Spain. Hungary made a few mistakes but his overall defensive micromanagement was enough to ensure that he got the reinforcements and the Ottoman army dwindled in enemy territory not reinforcing very well and he was able to push them back. Then it became a pitched war with front lines. Very interesting how this war actually transitioned from open battles everywhere to front lines. When the early surprise advantage was gone there was no way the Ottomans could overcome the tech difference really. In this battle which was the only one that really took place in the front line phase of the war the Ottoman army couldn't even wipe 12k in planes with a 5 attack. That's how bad the tech difference is. Hungary was still taking more casualties in this battle until he was able to reinforce it fully and get the combat width up which explains why the casualty ratio in the war analyzer for this battle is overall in favour of the Ottomans but when Hungary evened out the battle the casualties must have turned around on the Ottomans which is probably why he retreated and then basically sued for peace. By the way, I almost forgot to mention the simple way to avoid all this and do your transfer war with no problems. All you have to do is what is called a three-way transfer with a third party. Another random country who isn't involved in any truces or alliance requirements can just be a middleman so you don't have to break the alliance with your ally. I've never made this mistake again and I always use three-way transfers in similar situations. This war was declared about two years before the truces of everyone else expired after the previous war, so as it dragged on the prospect of full escalation was looming. Myself on Aragon Italy, Poland Lithuania and probably Tatarstan would join again, and it would be a rerun of the war in the previous video, which the enemy side did not want to do. They knew that they would probably lose that. Those three countries in the Axis scale really well, so it's not in their interest to have a rerun of the war this early. They need more time to build up. So that's why the Ottomans just accepted a peace deal there and then. He probably looked at Hungary's infamy when he declared declared the war as part of his calculation, knowing that Hungary could only take one state if they won. But if the Ottomans won, he could take Wallachia for free, which is a core, and then one state. So the risk-reward calculation was pretty good for him. Montenegro only has about 100k pops, and the capacity to build zero brigades. And how many Hungarian accepted pops Croatians does it have? About 3.7% of that. A very underwhelming reward for such a great victory for Hungary. Taking southern Serbia obviously would have been much better. That was a silly idea from Batavia. He's a sort of Balkan LARPer instead of a real pop maxer as he should be in Victoria 2. There will be plenty time for LARPing when Victoria 3 comes out. For now we focus on raw pop numbers. Overall as everyone who's watched the Hungary cinematic universe will know, Hungary struggles for pop numbers. Right now in this campaign they have about 6 million pops, of which only 2.8 million are accepted. These are the Hungarians obviously, the Slovaks which they also start with, and the Croatians that they accept through a decision. In some versions of DoD, Hungary gets to accept Romanian, which is a huge portion of their population. Again, you have to put LARPing aside for that, because that could never happen. But it's really unfair, because the Ottomans get to accept Greeks and Serbians and so on, while Hungary just gets the Croatians, which is nice, but it's not very many people as you can see. Now as I said, the Batavia player is a Balkan LARPer, and there's something that he talked about a lot in the campaign, which was that as Hungary you can actually actually release Slavonia, a one province Slavic minor, although it has Hungarian as an accepted pop. So if this country goes on to form Yugoslavia, they have Yugoslavia but with Hungarian accepted. This is quite a complicated thing to do in multiplayer. You have to release the country and then switch to it on a rehost and somehow feed all the land to it through transfer wars. This really depends on if the host and your neighbouring countries allow you to do this. Now I know that there's quite a lot of you shouting at your screen going Spud Gun, there's a country right next to this where people have already done this to get more accepted pops. And you're right. Right, this country goes by many names. Some would call it Banat, some would call it Siebenbergen, but in DoD 1.9 that we're playing right now in this video, it's called Transylvania. This country's accepted pops are Hungarian and Romanian. Now I mentioned this happened before. It happened way back in Napoleon's Legacy, the campaign I streamed, and then Pychucker made great edits out of. I can't release Siebenbergen. I'll have to fight a war against myself for liberation. I release Siebenbergen because I'm going to play as that. Uh yeah, it just works. Yeah. What, right? Is this Hungarian complicated armor. render? So yeah, this is actually very viable stuff. I don't think anyone's done it specifically with this Slavonia thing yet, but it might happen in the future, especially now. Anyway, that's that tangent over. As for the dual monarchy and the Holy Roman Empire, well, the dual monarchy is slightly more favourable to our side, and the Holy Roman Empire was allied to the other side earlier and is still more favourable to them. So they just balanced each other out. If one of them joined, the other would have just joined on the other side. Those two just need to have their own war, which they actually will in the next video. Wow, did I just spoil that? But it's not going to happen in the way that you think it's going to happen. You see that little yellow bit in Belgium? If you're really paying attention to this campaign, you'll know what country that is. Can anyone guess? That's what's going to trigger a dual monarchy HRE showdown.
Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, Patreon, join the channel membership, all that good stuff. I've actually got a new live streamed multiplayer campaign starting one hour after the release of this video, catch that live. It's CWE Cold War Enhanced starting in 1950 and that is going to be an absolute mess of a mod, we all love it, it's crazy. You can nuke people in Victoria too, you need to see this. I'll see you all in the next video, goodbye.